James Adam. Uh, not the first Adam to fall, but definitely an Adam who has fallen. Uh, just a little bit more of my childhood. Uh, uh, I'm the oldest of three children. Uh, grew up with a single mother. Uh, in the beginning, there was a lot of fighting in the house. Uh, after so long, uh, my mom and dad were fighting so bad that my mom stabbed my dad, or my stepdad, and he, he was gone. You never seen him again. So uh, he was out of the life. And then after that, things were just, you know, kind of good. You know, we just uh, were just a family, and we just grew up. Got to high school, uh, graduated, ended up moving to Houston, and uh, I started. I decided I was going to go to UTI to be a decent mechanic. And uh, at this point in time, I had been dating this chick for a while, uh, a high school sweetheart, and she went to Houston with us. Uh, at that point, I've been in school for about nine months. I was working at Sawgrass Steakhouse, and life was good. I thought I didn't have everything figured out. You know, uh, I was living what I perceived to be uh, what I should have been doing at that time in my life. And, uh, uh, well, something, something happened. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened at the time, but uh, my girlfriend at the time, she came to me that I deeply was in love with. And she was like, uh, I don't love you no more. And she walked out of my life along with all my hopes and dreams that I, I, I had at that time. And I didn't know how to take it. You know, I took it devastatingly. I really just didn't want to feel at this time. I didn't want to uh, be alive, I guess. So uh, I was in, I was working at Sawgrass Steakhouse in Houston in the middle of the jungle, man. It was, I don't know what you would explain it, but uh, there was anything and everything you can get your hands on. And everything I got my hands on, I was taking and started using, uh, started doing XC and bars and every drug there was. And pretty soon, before I know it, I, I, I don't know what happened to my car. I'm barely hanging on to a job. My house had been broken into. Polly Wine was passed out at my house. I think that's what happened. I still don't know. And we'll never know. But uh, anyway, I moved back home. Uh, I cried out to my mom. I was like, your son is coming at it. Uh, the only thing I can remember we, we was waking up to is, I, mean, I think I, I hit a bar or I hit some drugs in the chimney. And that was my life at that time. I was thinking, oh, where's my next coming from? And uh, it's a sad way to live. Uh, you know, uh, didn't care about anything else. And at that point, I knew that I was about to lose my job and I was about to be on the streets. So I came, I come back home, which at that time, my mom was living in Silver Springs. So uh, come home a, a bro a, a broken and bruised up. So uh, she took me in. You know, she wasn't having that, no drugs, none of that stuff. But, you know, I thought it would still be all right if I was just smoking weed and uh, drinking. So that's what I did. And, I, uh, I, you know, I got got myself to what I thought was pretty good. You know, I thought I was doing all right. And so I joined the Marine Corps. So this has been one of the most prestigious things I ever decided to do or do in my life. So I joined the Marine Corps. And go through boot camp, get out of boot camp, it's like a rock star. It was like, everything was just awesome, you know. Uh, hoorah, you know, uh, just walking and living, you know. Hoorah, hoorah, yeah. But, uh, so uh, I'm going through the Marine Corps and thinking that, you know, everything's still okay, but you know, in my mind, you can run away from addiction, but addiction is still gonna be there no matter where you go. You can try to take it. And, but it's going to catch up with you. So uh, I'm in I'm in the Marine Corps about three years, and I start you know it's heavy drinking. Uh, I start getting back into drugs. Next thing you know, I have done. Went, they done sent me to a rehab. I go to rehab, get drunk on the way back from rehab, on, on a plane, pass out in in, a, in the airport, miss my flight back. I'm but I'm late. So then I go to the brig. Get out of the brig. Go to, uh, I don't even know exactly everything that was going on at that time, just tell you the truth. But uh, anyway, after about three years, three and a half years, I get kicked out with other than honorable discharge. And that was just something that took it out of my life. Because that was something that I, you know, I was really proud of. I thought I accomplished something. I had already failed at going to you know, college and 
uh, the being married and doing all of the things, the polite picket fence, all that. I didn't fail at all that. So I thought I would just redeem myself by doing this. And then I failed at it. So here I am. I'm like, just crawling on the ground because I'm about this tall. And uh, I had to come home to mom again. And, uh, embarrassed. Uh, so, you know, I just put on a mask. I started wearing a lot of masks at this time. I just became uh, what everybody, on the outside, I looked all right. You know, I was, I was still kind of in shape. And, you know, from appearances on the outside, I could, I could pull it off. I could, pull off. I could make these lives work. You know, uh, and I just let people think that I finished the Marine Corps and uh, that I had this and that. And really, you know, it was like that uh, I can't, you know, I got all my things in my mama's name. But, you know, it was just a lie. The whole thing was a lie about it, you know. Uh, and I was, just, I was living that lie. And, and, and that condemnation from that lie, from all these things. And, and plus, under the table, I was a hardcore alcoholic at this time. But it didn't take long for uh, all this to catch up with me. Uh, I think it was out of, I was kicked out of the Marine Corps for about a year and a half. I hadn't racked up three DWIs. And, you know, I set out the first one, set out the second one. The third one, I, they, they, they let me make it because I still wasn't a felon at that time. They let me make it, and I went and set it out, too three months if I was a trustee, you know, and I'm sitting here just doing this and just keep on taking and taking and taking. After the third one, I needed some help, man. I couldn't, I couldn't keep a job. I was staying drunk all day, every day, and, you know, until I passed out. And I didn't want to wake up, wake up and pass out again at 2, 12 o'clock sometimes, you know. It was that, that hardcore. Um, so I decided my sister came to me begging me one day because she knew where I was. She had gotten a flyer from a, it's a Victory Life Ministries, which is a, a, it's a ministry started in California by Freddie Garcia that uh, he was a heroin addict, and he knew that you know, heroin wasn't just something you just beat on your own. You know, it was something that had to be uh, done through Jesus is the only one that could do it, honestly. But it, it's not something you just, you know. So he, he started this ministry. You know, it's about complete surrender. Complete surrender, give your whole life. Give God everything. God's number one. You know, and, uh, you know, and also they was, uh, they was spiritual. You, don't, you know, and I didn't understand the spiritual part. When I went in, I was really trying hard to do things. I was, I was walking that tightrope thinking I was going to be able to make things work, you know. And uh, that's what I was doing. But uh, I never got the aspect. I was really just kind of judging them. I'm like, these dudes are crazy, man. They're not... They're jumping around. They're, they was living free in the spirit is what they was doing, honestly. But I didn't see it that at that time. At that time, I was like, these people are crazy. Uh, they're falling out on the floor. Uh, I'm like, I, I, I was so skeptic of it that I couldn't receive my healing. I couldn't get a healing because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that Jesus could heal me from that at the time because uh, I was too busy saying, Man, I don't want people thinking I'm crazy. These people were, you know, I was being a skeptic. And, uh, you know, I did the clapping. I did, I did a little raising of hand. I learned to pray. I got, I got some biblical knowledge. I got some intellectual knowledge of what, who God was and things of that. But I didn't get no relationship with him at that time. You know, I didn't get no, no love or understand the love that he had for me at that time. So about... I'm walking this tightrope thinking that Adam can do it on his own, that uh, uh, by following the rules and doing the right thing, that, oh, you know, things are going to work out for me. Well, it was, uh, it had Thanksgiving that came up. I had been doing well, you know, walking that tightrope. And they was like, uh, my family didn't have the money to come up there and see me for Thanksgiving, so they let me take the car. Oh, my God. So they, they gave me the car and the keys, and I, I'll go home. i drive home. But I stopped at the liquor store on the way home. Got a bottle. Uh, by the time I got home, I was trashed. I don't even remember Thanksgiving dinner at the house. And I came back. I had a, you know, and I, I was so ashamed of what I did. You know, I, I didn't have any power to, at the time to stop that. You know, there wasn't no, I wasn't living in nothing. I was just trying to walk straight. So anyway, I, I run away from the ministry because of uh, what I did. 
And uh, after I get out of ministry, I come back home. At this point, I'm like, how am I going to start drinking? How am I going to start using? Because I was, st- I was drink- drinking was my main thing, but I had pills on the side. I was smoking whenever I could. I- if there was something there, man, it was coming in. I was doing it. You know, and, uh, I didn't really care because you know, uh, I didn't care about myself. And then plus, I didn't care about anybody around me. I might have said I loved Jesus, but there wasn't no evidence of that I loved anybody. You know, uh, I could say I love somebody all the, all the time and trying to get what I want or trying to make you believe something, but it's just words. Love is an action. Love's going to show in your life, and people are going to see it. You ain't got to say it. Um, so at this point, I'm like, so how am I going to quit drinking? How am I going to start? I never did the ministry again. I did this, I did this. And so I'm thinking, oh, I need to get the right job, the right car, get the right girlfriend. All these things come to me. I'm, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do right this time. So I'd get sober for like two weeks, and I think I'm doing good. And then uh, I don't know how it ended up that uh, I got a job in the oil field, but I got a job in the oil field. I was making good money. Uh, ended up with a nice car, a nice car place and a girlfriend. I don't know how nice she was, but I had a girlfriend. Uh, so anyway, I was, I'm out there doing all this, but it seems like everything was worse. I was living deeper in my, my combination and things like that, and I was like, what's going on? I, 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 had, I could not stop. There was no, I, I, I couldn't stop. So anyway, I get another DWI, fourth one, felony. They tried to give me probation. I was like, no, nah, I can't. I can't do. I can't stop. I get probation. There ain't no way I'm gonna do it. For one, I'm not gonna do it. For two, I need some time to stop. I, I gotta break this right here. Some time. I, I didn't think I would. Well, me in my mind, I'm still not wanting to go back to Jesus or God or anything. I go to a prison. Do a year in prison. They send me to a safe P. Get to safe P, and they start teaching us how to, you know, the 12 steps. Uh, things of uh, keep stay away from people, places, and things. Do this, do this, do this. You know, and I'm learning all this stuff, and I think I'm smart. And I'm writing it down. I'm taking me a whole bunch of notes. I was like, I'm going home. I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna do right. So uh, I come home and uh, I start. No, I didn't come here first. I, uh, I come home. I go straight to pro or whatever. And I, I go to pro, and then about two weeks after that, I, I'm, I got a bottle in my hand. I'm, I got a bottle of KD in my hand. Not, not just a, a bottle, but a nasty bottle. And I didn't pop the little thing off the top. I was drinking like that. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I just seen the flash of everything that was about to happen. And I was like, I remember telling myself, if I ever drink again, or if I ever use again, if I ever hurt anybody I loved again, that I said I loved anyway, that I was just going to take in myself. You know, just, I'm, it's not worth living. There ain't, that's not a lot. I was at that point. I was drinking. And I was crying. And I just poured that bottle out, man. And I, I've never poured a drink. I never wasted anything before in my life. I promise you. Not anything that's going to get me messed off. And uh, I just hit my knees and cried out to the Lord. And said, Lord, I'll do anything never to drink, never to use, never to hurt the people I love again. And, and then at that point, I, I knew I had been delivered from alcoholism. At that point, I knew I was never going to have a drink, and I haven't. That's been over eight months ago. And if y'all know me in the past, that, that's... But at that point, that, I knew that wasn't what all God was about. I was like, okay, I've been delivered. I, I, I'm going to go to heaven. I've been saved. But that's not living. I'm not, we're not called to be sit on the bench Christians. We're not called to live in powerless or just to walk around being uh, part of, you know, I, I've been delivered, I've been saved. No, that's not what Christianity is about. That's not what God's about. God's about glory. God's about power. And that's where time to walk in that. So at that point, I was like, if it's Jesus, if it's God, if it's Holy Spirit, I want it and I want it all. So I started digging. There's some men and women that was telling me, to seek God and keep delivering. He said, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after Jesus or after God, and different whichever ones it is. And uh, 
It's about being hungry for God. It's about getting more because there's always more. There's never just a less, you know. Uh, so at this point, I kept seeking. I knew I'd been delivered from uh, drinking and using. I mean, even drinking a whole bunch of coffee like I used to. I, I, mean, I was like, things are different. I remember when I first went to prison, I started drinking coffee like it was something. I was down in it, boy. My head was hurting. Just give me another cup. And I don't know why. But, and then, uh, so I kept going, and then I was getting invited to a whole bunch of prayer meetings and just being in the presence of God and calling out to him. And uh, so I knew there was more, and I started praying for that more. I started praying for a boldness, a desire. And uh, there was a point when we went to a prayer meeting. I've been, I've been seeking hardcore for about two months. And uh, we were singing a uh, song, and I had my hands up, and I was crying. You know, the Lord is getting things out of me. And I, I just a, a poor love just came over me. At that point, I was, my mouth was just speaking these words, and I had no idea what was coming out. I just knew that the power of God had just entered my life, and I, that things were going to be different, that I had the power to live as Jesus lived. You know, the same power that lives in Jesus lives in us. It's not a, I don't know why we have hospitals. We should be out there touching and healing people. You know, if we was actually seeking and living in the power of God. It's about being in a relationship. If we get a strong relationship, the love of God is going to convey through us. We're compelled to do the right thing through God's love. It's not about trying to do right or wrong. It's about being compelled by his love. We're just going to automatically want to do things right because God's love is pushing us to do things right. It's nothing to do with, oh, man, I think if, uh, if I step on this side, I'll be doing the wrong. Man, no, God's love is going to push us. It's just about loving him because his love is going to convey through you and everybody's just going to get it. I've made this connection. My, my family did not trust me. I don't blame them. But I made this connection with God. My family, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, they, they come to me and trust me with more than anything I've ever had any trust in my life. And uh, I don't know, it's, this is Jesus' thing. And uh, my whole, the peace in my mind is, I was at a point where I was ready to kill myself. And now, the peace that I live in, is just, I, I can't explain it, because my mind used to run. I used to think, oh, this, this guy thinks this of me, this person's thinking this of me, am I doing this right? I'm thinking, what does God think of me today? I don't care what other people are thinking, what do they say? Because this is where I stand, this is where I get the most peace at, crying out to God, if it, if it's God right here, this is the most peace, this is the most love, and just being in his presence at all times. Once, that's where your revelation comes from. That's where you're going to learn things from, and that's where you're going to get the real power from, being in his presence. I remember when I went to the Marine Corps. Right before I went to the Marine Corps, me and my mom was really, really close because she knew I was going through some things. I just got broken up with my girl, and I, I was hurting, and she was there for me, and we was talking about things, and we were so close. I left to go to the Marine Corps, right? And I knew she loved me, but the closeness wasn't there. I mean, because I, I wasn't talking to her on a daily basis. So I go to Marine Corps and I come back home, and I know she loves me, but we're not, we're not. same thing with God. If we're not constantly with God all day, every day, on a constant basis, intimately, on a, on a level that we, me and him are connected because we are together all the time, that's when, you know, you're not separated. You know he loves you, but the, the voice is a little bit dimmer, dimmer. But if you're with him all the time, the fire's coming through, the love's flowing out. People are going to know you're just going to be walking around in love. You know, I'm not longer an addict of anything besides a love addict. Love addict. Uh, the other day, uh, I, was at, I, I walked into a store, and this woman was crying. I was like, man, it's probably a good time to pray for somebody. Uh, God's like, pray for her. I'm like, I walked in the store. Boldness, baby. Just heard boldness. So I asked her, I said, can I pray for you? And uh, she said, yeah. Uh, so I put my hands on her shoulder, and I prayed for her. 
Because she was crying, so I, I didn't even know her face was like. She was crying so hard. I just told her, you know, God's love was covering her and that he's a comforter. That he don't put us through anything we can't handle. And I, didn't, I didn't know what she was going through. I was thinking, uh, I need to buy her out to Friday night. You know, we got, we got recovery going on. So she stopped. I got done praying. She thanked me. She gave me a hug. And then I told her about my testimony a little bit, about what happened in my life and what's been going on. And I was like, I've been going out to this, uh, you know, recovery group. Like, would you like to come? And she's like, I said, I don't know if, if that's what's going on with your sister. No, my sister just passed away. And I'm like, oh. So I've been invited. I was, I, was, I was like speaking live, but it was about, you know, maybe an, from an addict or a drinking stance. And she's like, it's okay, but my sister died and she gave me a hug and left. I go up to the counter, and the lady behind the counter is like, uh, I was delivered from alcoholism 12 years ago, or uh, I think she said nine years ago, and from uh, calling out to Jesus, and he took that away from me. I was delivered. I said, whoa, well, maybe this prayer was for her. You know, and I thought I'd been prayed the wrong prayer for her, and then this lady, so there's people were just getting tossed all over. You know, it just it spreads. Don't be afraid to sit back. Don't be afraid to go out there and say something to somebody, lay hands on somebody, pray for somebody. You know, you might get rejected every now and then, but I don't get hurt by people no more. I hurt for people. We see people that are hurting, we should be on them. We want to bring them out of that. We know that Jesus brings out everything. He saves every little aspect of your life. Not mentally, physically, emotionally, spirit, you know, he is the spirit that does that. Uh, but my, my life has just changed so drastically. And like I said, I've been sober eight months. That some people were like, oh, that's not. Well, if you know me, I wasn't sober for more than eight hours back in the day. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge accomplishment. And I know I'm never going to touch it again. I'm not even, there's no fear. There is no fear. You know, those who live in Christ Jesus, fear, love becomes more perfect. Perfect love casts out all fear. That's why we must live in Christ Jesus, in God, always stand in the Spirit at all times and for constantly feeding the Spirit. But it's more about the relationship. Stay in constant relationship with him. It's going to be so strong. And you won't have to, you're just going to convey love. Convey love. Compelled by love. Because that's what you are. We're, we're called to love. It says, um, love, love, God, dear, love God as you, love God with all your heart, all your soul, and then love your brother as you love yourself. I remember reading that for the first time, though, and I was like, man, I hate myself. I remember saying that. And I was like, how am I going to do that? I hate myself at that time. And this was coming from a cardinal mind, you know. But, you know, I got, got in there and I realized who God was and what he's done for me. And I realized how much he loved me. His love for me caused me, and then, I forget how to explain it. His love for me made, made me feel love. And then when I look in the mirror and see Christ, how can you not love Jesus that you're looking back at? You know what I mean? So, you love yourself because God loves you first, you know. And I know he desires a relationship with me more than I ever needed one with him. I finally got that. I'm like, he wants a relationship with me more than I need one? Because I was needing it bad. I needed it bad, but he really does. And But my name's Adam Wheeler. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a man of God now. I'm a lover of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And today, I live in his honor and his glory, because that's the way we're supposed to be living. Amen.